Hi, welcome back for Saturday morning story time. This is, I'm Miss Kim from the Maplewood Public Library in Maplewood, Missouri, and our book today is called A Computer Called Catherine. This book was written by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Veronica Miller Jameson, and published by Little Brown and Company Books. So let's see here. Let's get started. This is about a real person named Katherine Johnson. How Katherine Johnson helped put America on the moon, a computer called Katherine. Everywhere she went, Katherine counted. She counted her steps to church. She counted the plates on the dinner table. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother hundreds of steps to the two-room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoured thick books and added numbers at the speed of light. So the teacher decided she would skip first grade and start in second. But Catherine was such a fast learner she later skipped fifth grade, and before you can say mathematician magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everyone in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work at the same job as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as five plus five equaling 12. She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and dreamed of a future when all people would have equal rights. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school she could attend. There she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes, triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallelograms, and her love for math grew exponentially. At 15, Catherine started college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State. So a professor taught harder classes just for her. In advanced geometry, she plotted points on a graph. When she connected the points, they created a beautiful U-shaped curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine became a math teacher. Back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong, as wrong as 10 minus five equaling three. She believed women could be anything, scientists, lawyers, or mathematicians. And she set out to prove it. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. To Catherine, it added up to the perfect job. All day long, she pushed buttons on a calculator, just like the other women. She solved long math equations, just like the other women. She wrote answers on a huge data sheet, just like the other women. But Catherine wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, lots of questions. What were her calculations being used for? Why were they important? How did her answers help design airplanes and flights? The men engineers noticed that the woman who asked intelligent questions and how quickly she solved difficult math problems. 
so they ask Catherine to join their space team. Its mission? Send America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. Then she discovered that women weren't allowed to attend the group's meetings. She knew this was wrong. It was wrong as five times five equaling 20. So she asked if she could go. Women don't ever go to those, the engineers replied. Is there a law against it, she asked. No, they said. So Catherine showed up at the next meeting ready to work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight could, should blast off, and Catherine agreed. But first, she asked questions like, where should the rocket splash down? How high should it go? When should it land? Which was information Catherine carefully computed. She computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backward to figure out the time it should blast off. Then she began counting the days until launch. On May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight plan, he soared into the silvery sky. And 15 minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean right on schedule and right on target. Soon, Americans began dreaming of a longer flight around the entire Earth. To figure out the math for this long, complicated trip, engineers decided to use their new room-sized computer that worked much faster than people. But astronaut John Glenn, he trusted Catherine more than a machine. He couldn't step one foot onto the rocket until she said the computer's calculations were correct. Happy to help, Catherine checked every number. And on February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. Then people began wondering if an astronaut could travel all the way to the moon. Both the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to be the first to land there and win the space race. Catherine knew this flight was incredibly long and dangerous. Every calculation would have to be perfect. One math mistake and the rocket would zoom right past the moon. So we would have to orbit the Earth and then go out to the moon. As NASA's computer hummed and computed the flight path to the moon and back, Catherine went to work too, double-checking the machine's calculations, but this was the most complicated geometry problem she'd ever seen. One of the points, the spacecraft, was flying incredibly fast. Her target, the moon, was constantly circling the Earth while spinning. Some people thought the problem was too difficult to solve. Catherine knew that was wrong, as wrong as 25 divided by 5 equaling 4. She calculated and computed. She plotted and planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. Ten, nine, ignition sequence starts. Heart racing. Catherine leaned closer to the small television screen. Seven, six, five. She held her breath as powerful, powerful flames exploded on the launch pad. Four, three, two, one, lift off. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and disappeared into the ink black space. Four days later, as Neil Armstrong took his first step on the moon, Catherine smiled and began to count. Girls are capable of doing everything men are capable of doing. If you want to know, ask a question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Catherine Johnson. 
So it's got a picture of her hair working and her notes from NASA and gives you a timeline of her life. Now, Miss, Mrs. Johnson just passed away this last year. But you know what? At NASA, the building where she worked, they now have named that the Katherine Johnson building, Research Building. So that's our book this week, A Computer Named Katherine. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out our website, maplewoodpubliclibrary.org slash events and see what else is happening. We'll see you soon. Bye.